Hi guys, this is Michael Glockner again. This is uh, video number two, and this will be posted on May 27th, 2016. Yes, I've got my Ducati shirt on, so I'm in motorcycle mode. mode. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you so much for the amazing comments I got on the first video. Um, it was totally overwhelming on Facebook. It meant a lot to me, actually. Um, I'm not looking for attention in any, any kind of way. I just want to help and help you guys understand uh, the importance of staying strong mentally and, and all that good stuff. Um, last time we spoke about the book I wrote, I, I wanted to explain that for a moment. Here it is. It's called The Truth Behind a Happy Face. And my pen name is Roland Ulrich. On the cover, that's my son-in-law Ryan and my granddaughter Ava Rose. That was just a few hours after she was born. And I fought with the publisher because they didn't want me to put anybody on there that I knew, but I got it done. And the reason why I picked this picture um, there goes my sensitivity. Um, the reason why I picked that picture was for the fact that the way Ryan was looking at Ava was the same way I always looked at my two children. And um, it's just such a beautiful picture. And anyway, there it is. Um, in the book, which can be ordered through Amazon or Barnes and Noble online. It's, it's, um, it, it explains things that I can never do on YouTube because it took um, a time, a long time to, to write. It's really, I'm proud of the book. I, I didn't make it for any other reason, but what I'm going to tell you next here. I had so many people say so many things about me and my personal life and what they thought and what they perceived and I hated I really hated the fact that people were wrong 90% of the time nobody had the courage or the balls or the guts to fucking sit down and corner me and ask me what the hell was going on inside of my head I think they were scared to know what was going on inside of my head we grew up in you know, the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and the word gay, thanks to my Italian, my Sicilian grandmother, Nanny, she'd always refer as gay as being happy. So she'd always say to me, just be gay, just be gay. And I used to look at her because I knew she didn't really know what that word meant either. And I would smile inside because she was calling the shots and, and I, I, but, Anyway, long story short, people spoke very, very bad about me. And I found out from many others, many people would say things. And there, I had a close group of friends that did not speak badly of me and, and understood what I was going through mentally and how hard it was to be open about this subject. Um, I had people that would write me nasty letters. I was bullied. I was beat up. I was physically beat up. That happened in Hawaii. Um, but anyway, there's the things I have in the book. I just wanted my kids to know the truth. When I wrote the book, the doctors had given me two years to live. So I knew time was running out. I thought time was running out. I don't believe that now, okay? Um, which is a good thing. The, I just, it seemed like it would be ridiculous for me to pass on and not have my kids know the truth and, and only go by hearsay. Everybody wants to be proud of their parents and my kids can make their own judgments 
about my about me, but I wanted them at least to have the facts. And they're in this book. And no matter what anybody says, this book was written from my heart to my children. And that was it. But it got published, and um, I really didn't care if it did or not, to be honest with you. Okay, enough of that. I want to talk a little about um, accepting your disease, no matter what kind it is, no, no matter what it is that you have. I mean, I have HIV slash AIDS, okay? Um, many of you have other things. You have cancers, you have fibromyalgia, you have multiple sclerosis, you have leukemia. You just have, there's so many things out there that people have and there's always, there's chronic diseases that are hidden too and people have mental disorders and people have Crohn's disease and Lyme disease and there's just so many diseases and people have a really, really hard time with having a disease and um, it, it is hard, it is very hard. It's mind over matter though. Mind over matter means absolutely everything. And no matter how much you try to fight it, you have to have and learn a way to accept what you have. What, whether you're religious or not. I believe in God. I always have. And I've questioned His choices for me for most of my life. But this is the path that I've had. And I've had to accept it. Um, being gay, being different, um, I had to accept it, and I have. But it took me many years to do, and that's why when young people get a disease, it's hard. It's really hard. It's harder to cope with than a person of, of my age or a person that's above 50 because it's kind of expected in life. People do get shit. I mean, it happens. And that's another video down the road of how we can prevent a lot of diseases. But people ask me all the time about, well, if you're HIV positive, why do you have AIDS? And you look okay. Well, for a while, I really didn't look okay. For a while, I was going downhill extremely fast. Um, in 2007, my, my foot started hurting really bad, my right foot, and I, people were making fun of me at work, I mean, the way I was walking. But me, it, it wasn't meant intentionally to be mean, it was just, haha, look at Michael, he's, he's, he's getting old, he can hardly walk anymore, that wasn't it whatsoever. My foot hurt, so I went to the foot doctor. And they said, yeah, I need surgery after he took some x-rays and stuff. He said uh, there was a bone that wasn't um, connecting or growing correctly or was moving. I don't know. So I agreed with them and we had the surgery. It was weird though because after the surgery, it didn't get better. It was actually getting worse. So I called them again and we went down there. He, should, he put the x-rays up and he showed me on the screen. He said, look, Michael, everything's fine. What do you want me to do? And I said, okay. But that doesn't explain why my foot's gotten worse and now my left foot's starting to hurt. So again, all this was tying in and all this stuff of, of me not feeling well and things happening and I kind of knew it was related to the HIV. So in, um, make a long story short, I went back to the HIV doctor. They, I, I kept complaining. They kept saying, well, you shouldn't be hurting. That should not be affecting your walking and this and that. And the whole, every day was getting worse. Um, to cut a long story short, I went to four neurologists and one neosurgeon. And I've had countless MRIs, CAT scans and spinal taps and um, nerve conductive tests where they stick pins in your your, your nerves and move them around and I've had I've, I've had so many of these because they they could not pinpoint what I had at one time they were, were suggesting multiple sclerosis okay 
Um, I was like, whatever it is, I, I need to know so that I can accept my disease and so I can accept my journey and fight it the best I can. It's not the doctor's fault necessarily what you have. It's, it's things happen in life and you have to learn to accept the things that happen to you in life. You can't just ignore things, no matter how hard the truth is. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, the more you can do with yourself, the more you understand. So whatever happens to you in life, whatever it is, read, research, do what you can, because it's the only way to get through it. There is no other way. There's pain meds and all that crap, but that won't do anything. That's like putting a band-aid on a wound and hoping it stops the bleeding, but it never fucking does. It never does. And you've got to get it locked in your head. You've got to attack the disease. And it's your responsibility only. Nobody else's. It's nice to have support, but if you don't have support, you still got to learn a way to believe in yourself in doing these things. So, so through many tests that I had, many tests, they finally con conducted, or concluded, sorry, that I had this. This is, I'm going to put this up there so that if you'd like to look at it, look it up because it's, it's very, very hard and complex. HIV vacular myelopathy. Yeah, I hope you can see it right. Um, I'm going to give you the short version of it and then if you are interested in looking it up, you can. It's very complicated. I've studied it for about eight years now and there is no cure. There is nothing you can do with HIV vascular myopathy and this I believe. I do fight the inflammation through a lot of strawberries and berries in general and cinnamon and things and we'll go into that later but there's nothing chemically or anything that can help you with this disease um anyway you it, it settles in your spine my, my allopathy settles in your spine and it goes from the top of my head all the way down to the bottom of my spine it affects all my limbs affects my feet my hands, my legs, my arms, my strength. My fingers get stuck. Sometimes I can't even open up a water bottle. Um, this is why I had to stop riding motorcycles. Um, I couldn't hold the bike up without losing my balance. And this is why I had to stop driving for a while, but I'm driving again. I probably shouldn't be, but I am. So that's just being a, a hard-headed German and Italian Sicilian. Anyway, um, myelopathy. There's the sheen that goes around the spine. The sheen is a, 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 a like a skin cover that wraps around all your nerves from the back of your head to, down to the bottom of your tailbone, and it keeps those nerves intact and covered and protected what the myelopathy is and what the HIV supposedly caused was causing that that sheen to disintegrate and when that disintegrates which mine has already started to what it does is it exposes your nerves so I get sharp shooting pains down my legs and my arms and sometimes I'll fall down sometimes my vision goes completely blurry um, and it's not my glasses, it's, um, it's the disease itself. Sometimes I'll be um, in the morning or at night, I, I lose my vision a lot and it's just completely blurred. Um, and then it comes back, comes and goes. It does it throughout the day sometimes, mostly in the morning and at night also. And I was bound to a mobility scooter for uh, three and a half years, um, almost pushing four years. I was in walkers, showered chairs, uh, uh, I had um, uh, canes, um, anyway, it's, it's a real horrible disease and you, the only thing the doctors could offer me 
was a morphine drip. And at that point, that's when I knew, I knew I had to fight this. I knew I had to find a way to fight this battle. I, I read everything possible, like I said, and there is no, no cure. But that doesn't mean your mind can't cure things. That doesn't mean that you can't try. And I tried with my guts. <laughs> and I pulled myself out of that wheelchair. And I made myself walk again. And I'm, because of my two dogs, I'm walking them almost four to five miles a day now. <laughs> Do I hurt? Hell yeah, I hurt. I've learned how to walk on my heels. I've learned how to rebalance myself. And I've learned how to walk up my stairs to my condo again. I was used to fall down once in a while. And, um, but it's mind over matter. And the same thing with the pain. The pain's no less. I've blocked the pain out of my head. I don't think about it like I used to. I've accepted my disease. And that is what everyone has to do with their disease. Once you accept it and take the pain away, take the pain away, don't think about it, then you can move on and to try to better yourself. I know I'm going over the, the amount of time. Well, I didn't want to go any more than 15 minutes of video, but we'll push this a little bit longer on this one. This is why I have AIDS. What happened was, supposedly, this is what happened. My T cells had dropped to a certain point that caused opportunistic diseases to, to attack my body. I've had a lot of skin cancer tumors also removed, but so far that hasn't been the worst thing. So the myopathy attacked my body. At this point, the doctors cannot give me a clear, clear answer whether it was caused from HIV and my immune system or it was caused by the atripla, the pill itself that was fighting my viral load in the HIV and, and fighting to keep my T cells up. So they cannot and they will not give me an answer. I, I, they honestly believe, I believe it, that they don't know which is fine. But the last neurosurgeon that I went to it was a lady and she just looked at me in her office and um, no, no offense to her, but these, the, you know, some doctors can be cold as ice and she just looked at me and she says, there's nothing I can do. You need to go home. You need to research this and read it for yourself. But I estimate you have two years to live. And that was in 2011. And um, I'm smiling because when someone tells me something of a challenge like that, I, I nothing against her, but I wanted to say, well, fuck you, doctor. You don't know me. And I'm sorry if that sounds cocky, but that's the kind of attitude you one must have. You have to believe in yourself. I can't say that enough. So I knew if someone told me that I had two years to live and I got two beautiful kids and I've got a, a life ahead of me still and I wasn't ready to give up, I wasn't ready to lay on the couch with a white flag and surrender to the fucking world, then I, it was up to me to do something. And I, um, I did. And I'm proud of that. Am I in pain all the time? Yes. Every single day. 24-7, I hurt. I am in pain. I also smile because I'm not in a wheelchair anymore. We'll talk about that on the next segment a little bit. Um, but I am happy. I drive. I'm able to do my own things. Is it hard to open a water bottle? Yeah, I keep a pair of pliers here in the kitchen. I, it, it's hard sometimes to brush my teeth because my hand, my fingers don't straighten out. So my, my hands get stuck on the toothbrush so that when I'm done brushing, I have to plot, I have to push my fingers off the toothbrush. So these are all things living with myelopathy. And again, this is why I'm considered AIDS. I do not have full-blown AIDS, which is, um, we'll, we'll, we'll touch basis next time on um, the difference between HIV, AIDS, and 
some of the basics and, and catch you up a little bit with that. But I'm going to let you guys go now. Um, I hope this helped explain some things to people. And please private message me on Facebook. Please private message, message me questions that you may have because I'll be more than happy to, to answer. Don't be scared to ask. You can ask me anything. Please, I've been through everything as it is. Nothing will shock me and I will answer you the best way I can. All right? So, I still love you guys. I always will. Subscribe to my uh, YouTube videos and I'll continue to make them as long as you want me to. Love you. Chill. Bye-bye.